as the seasons change, so does your garden and so does the environment. The days are shorter, the mornings are dark and cold and just pretty much all day around there's a chill in the air. What needs to happen now is your garden is going through change and you need to make sure your garden has everything it needs to be able to adapt to the change and thrive with the new conditions it faces itself with. So this video is the 10 top things I do to make sure that my garden and food forest is ready for winter. So while we're nice and warm in the greenhouse with a cup of coffee, let's get onto the first one, which is let's look back into what was. Autumn is a great time to reflect on the previous season. What worked? What didn't work? What pests you had this year compared to last year? What you did differently? Did you plant new crops that worked? Did you plant old crops that didn't? Did you get more rain, less rain? Was it hotter or was it colder? Going through all of those kind of questions allow you to learn about your local environment, your local microsystem, and just your growing ability and skills. So, the first and probably one of the most important ones is don't forget to take time to reflect on the season that's behind. Learn, write down in journals, on your computer and folders, wherever you need to store the information. Write it down so that when it comes to spring next year, you haven't forgotten everything because now all the winter growing has taken up all the space in your mind and you can't actually remember all of the details about the past summer growing season. So the next thing you need to really start thinking about are pests that come along with the change into winter. You get different pests to you do in summer and part of that is thinking about companion planting, how you can confuse pests to make sure you're not creating a big monocrop bed of the same thing where a pest or Moth can fly over, hone in, know exactly what that is, and just wipe the entire thing out. So here as an example, I planted some garlic in modules. And what I'm doing is the garlic I'm going to be planting beautiful as companion to my celery. So what's going to be happening is the celery is no longer going to be and plagued with aphids or anything that really bugs celery in winter. Garlic is a really well-known companion for celery. So what I have here is I have a border of celery along the edge. They can get nice and big, sprawl over. And in between the, the planting of celery just behind it, I'm going to be planting a row of garlic. So now what I'm starting to do, you can see I'm starting to think of layers. So the front layer is celery then we have garlic and then the next tip which is coming up soon the section behind me is going to be broad beans so you can see as soon as we have the layers of different plants a flying pest coming over is not going to very easily be able to identify exactly what is going on it's probably going to get a little bit confused probably going to go just fly over and look for either your neighbor or, or an easier meal somewhere down the line so think about pests, pest prevention, interplanting, and all those kinds of techniques that you need to think about to make sure you don't get completely annihilated by winter pests. So I'm in the same bed, next tip, and that is start planting out your winter seeds or seedlings that you've started in the greenhouse. I did a video not too long ago about what you need to do to start getting your winter seeds going. They should all be going now, you should have little seedlings or as in the case here with the broad beans, you need to start getting these into the ground. So that's the next one is make sure you are planning to get an early start to winter so that when winter arrives, you already have some growth. You don't have an empty garden that you're suddenly rushing off to the nursery to try and find seeds to fill up your garden. So make sure that you get your broad beans, your root crops and your other seeds into the ground as soon as possible 
so that you can get an early start to winter while there's still a little bit of heat and you can start getting nice early yields of winter crops as soon as you possibly can. So in the transition from summer to winter, the sun heat loving plants die off. What that means is you're left with a whole bunch of crispy dry leaves that need to be cleaned up for the next crop to be able to climb up, set in. So this next tip is clean up. Walk around your garden, your food forest, clean up any plants that are dead or diseased, but there is a but. You need to decide what your stance is on cleaning up, depending if, if you have an annual garden or a food forest. Food forests feed themselves by decaying organic matter, fallen leaves, end of crops that just stay there, chop, drop. Annual beds, on the other hand, prefer to cleaner environments where little bugs and slugs and all of that don't hide in. Food forests, as an example, have slug eaters and snakes, all around. So there, if you have snails and slugs hiding, that's perfectly fine. Within a raised bed, you're not necessarily gonna have snakes inside. And if you do, for some of you, it might be the last time that you ever go back to that bed. So annual beds tend to need to be a lot more hygienic and clean than food forests. So understand your environment and the needs. But this trellis, as an example, is filled with an old pumpkin this is going to come down, which then leads us into the next point, which is over there in that corner, and that is composting. So here we have beautiful, beautiful homemade compost, which is so fluffy. And if you smell it, it just smells like the richness of the earth. This is garden waste and food waste mixed with kashi as well. And all that it is, is it's about six, seven month aged, turned every now and then from what I've done over here. Here you can see I've started my next bed, which has a whole bunch of garden prunings. And underneath it, you can see a whole bunch of cleaning up from the garden. We have, you can see here, dying, decaying leaves. There's some old fennel. So you can see, as soon as you start cleaning up your garden, putting it into your compost pile, you start creating free, high quality compost that's gonna go back into the garden. And what I'd really like to point out is how these steps are actually sequential, meaning one impacts the next, very much like an ecosystem. So there we went from cleaning up the garden to building up your compost, your compost then needs to go back into the garden, which is the next tip, which is use autumn as a feeding and nutrient replenishment season. So if I look here, this black gold, as it's often called, needs to go back into the garden so that when the rains arrive, all of those nutrients can go back into the soil all the living organisms in the soil can start enjoying all those nutrients. So what you do from the garden goes back into your compost pile and your compost pile goes back into your garden. You're closing the loop, you're not throwing anything away, you're not buying in fertilizers and soils and all of that stuff. So try as much as possible to use this sequential system where one feeds the next, feeds the next, feeds the next, and that cycle just keeps going and going and going. So as we head into the food forest now, the next tip is mulch. Mulch, 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 as much as you can. Make sure that you have a really thick, organic, healthy layer of mulch. What it's gonna do is it's going to suppress those terrible winter weeds and winter grasses. I know we have a huge problem with that because of the wind that we, we get. And you can see here, because of the mulch we've put on, there are no weeds, no grasses that are coming up. And what also happens with 
mulching in winter is it creates a consistent and more even temperature for the plants. If you have exposed soil surfaces, as the temperatures fluctuate, hot in the day, cold at night, or just cold, the soil is busy adapting to that too, and your plants are busy freaking out because they don't actually know what's going on. If you have a nice thick layer of insulation, what you're doing is you're creating a more stable temperature environment, and then that's doubling up as breakdown of organic matter, which is building soil. And not only are you building soil, you're busy feeding all of the microbes and the, the living environment organisms inside the soil. So mulch is an incredibly important and valuable resource to be putting into your autumn garden in preparation for winter so that you don't get burnt by temperature fluctuations and soil erosion due to rain, soil running off. Get mulching, don't forget it. So I'm still in the food forest and what we have here is wild garlic. Now for me, in this food forest environment, wild garlic is incredibly important. Why? It's a huge pest deterrent. Pests don't come near this wild garlic. You walk past it and it smells like pungent garlic. The roots are very, very dense and thick and they spread out. So for me, I struggle with moles and bowls. In the vicinity of the wild garlic, none of that. I have plants that have been interplanted with these and none of them have any pests or diseases. So what the time is now is to take a clump like this, gently tug, and autumn is the perfect time to be taking plants like this and let me show you you take one wild garlic and I suddenly you got another one this one is going to create a clump like this and so you just keep going and going and going and dividing your plants there we go another one so here I have two, ultimately what will be sets of wild garlic. Those I'm going to plant all over the garden. So part of your winter garden prep is take plants that you can divide, get them divided and planted now so that they have that transition. Now in the cooler weather, you don't want to be doing this in summer or spring. And ultimately you're getting free plants that are going to help you grow food and deter pests. So winter is pruning time. I'm standing in what was quite a small apricot tree which has shot out limbs a meter and a half, probably close to two meters over summer. And it was pruned twice, summer pruning. What you need to do in autumn is you need to start looking at your trees and the structures, doing some research and deciding on A, what shape you want, do you want a leader? Do you want a vase shape? Whatever shaped tree you want, you need to start putting that planning in place now so that when they do go dormant, those leaves start falling to the ground and you get to see the shape of your trees. You have an idea of how you want to prune them. This not only applies to fruit trees, also your berries, your raspberries, blackberries, tayberries, young berries, all of your berries that grow on canes. It's also time to start thinking about when they go dormant, looking at your, your different years, first year canes, second year canes, which ones need to be removed, which ones can stay. Because there's not much happening in the garden in autumn, you have the time to look, go around, look at your plants, look at the bushes, analyze them, so that when it comes time to winter pruning, you have a very clear idea of what you need to do. And then last but not least, cover crops. Now is the time to start getting your winter cover crop seeds sown. So I'm talking about vetch, clover, oats, and a lot of your grains that are soil builders that provide a huge amount of biomass underground and then give you green manure at the top, chop, drop. And this bed in front of me, which is why I'm standing here, is where I dedicated an entire winter growing season 
purely towards black oats as a cover crop. The plants have done amazingly well. I've done a video, which I'll tag for you, which is really useful in terms of seeing what it looked like, how you do the chop and drop process. But in essence, if you have poor soil or you just want to give your soil a really, really good punch of nitrogen, living organisms, biomass, dedicate a season towards winter cover cropping. You will not regret it. And the one season you're gonna lose of potential food you're gonna get from it, in the long run, you're gonna be getting a lot more. So start thinking about your cover crops. And there you have 10 things I do in my autumn garden to make sure that my winter garden is set up for the best possible growth and production it can offer. If you have any additional tips that work for you, please drop them below in the comment section. I'd love to hear what works for you that I possibly haven't tried or you know, something that you think might just work better than others. I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do that. It's a community where we all like to learn from each other. I love to hear your suggestions. I hope you enjoy watching and listening to my, to my content. And if you liked it, please like it. Please share it out to the communities that you think would enjoy something like this or would find value in learning some of the techniques that others use to prepare their winter gardens now in autumn. Until next time, happy planting and happy growing.